the Bible says that God communicates with his creation. Give me the Bible. Give me the word of God. I'm afraid that you might trick me. I can't trust you that way. I want the more sure word of prophecy. When him walk into her, just walk out. I believe in prophecy but only when it's done according to the new testament guidelines that if somebody's prophecy prophesying i'm sorry if somebody's bringing a word of prophecy there must be judges around to check to see if this thing is really coming from god or you just want to appear to be super super spiritual and we are living in that day when everybody wants to appear to be super spiritual you think, you think some people have tuned me out by now? Maybe. Maybe somebody came on and said, Oh, I thought it was going to be hot. Maybe. I'm going to make the point I just made. I'm going to make the point. That when we read the Bible, we can be assured that behind, behind Joshua and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Isaiah that there was a divine voice Hebrews 1 tell us that in sundry times God in sundry times God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets God spoke to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the others by the prophets watch me now but we know that the writer of Hebrews is telling us that a divine voice, not just any and any divine voice, God's voice. When we take the Bible up to read it, we must remember that God's voice is right there in it. Right there where? I'm going to show you something that might interest you. Hebrews 3.7. I'm going to see if I can show you something that might interest you. Uh, are, are you going to see, you're going to see something here. You're going to see something. We need to be convinced about the Bible and about the word of God. Verse 7 from chapter 3. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says, let's go again, let's go again. Therefore, as the Holy Ghost says, today, if you will hear, hear what? Hear whose voice? Don't get spooky about it. He's speaking to us from the pages of the Bible. If you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the day of the provocation really is really is really verse 7 i want before i run on to chapter 10 verse 15 because we have to get proof from the bible that is not a white man book it is not a white man book <laughs> oh god by the way, did you all know that the Bible says that Abraham had a child with Hagar? Did you know where Hagar had come from? Egypt. <laughs> all right, that's not what we're talking about this evening. Chapter 10, 15 is what we're looking for. Chapter 10 and verse 15. Chapter 10. And verse 15, I want to take you to another verse that might help you along the way and help to solidify your faith in these terrible days. Here we go. Wherefore, I thought you were helping me to read. I told you chapter 10, verse 15 for so long. 
Are you helping me to read now? Some people are still writing. I want you to help me to read. It's reading time. Come on. Where of the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had... Hold on. After that he had what? And he, the Holy Spirit is a what? Thank you, man of God. He's a witness to us. You know what you're going to do for me to stop believing the word of God? Me you know what then going to do for me to stop believing? Me say if me fall on a mash up tomorrow, or in a mash up state, if God says so, I saw it go. Now the one I know that you really love is the one I'm going to take you to. It is chapter 4 and verse 12. It is chapter 4 and verse 12 of the same book of Hebrews. Watch this now. We all know it. We've all loved it. We're going to read it in a brand new context tonight. Here we go. For the word of God is quick and Come on, man. It is what? Quick. And it is what? Powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow. And is a what? Hold on. What is a discerner of the thoughts? Some guy reading you up every minute? No. What is a discerner of man's thoughts? The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discern of the swords. And and what? Thank you, Brother G. Oh God. Let me tell you what this really means to somebody like me. That I don't have to hang around waiting on a thus saith the Lord from some girl or some guy. I don't have to hang around the wait for somebody come give me a word from the Lord. For God is speaking to me right now, right here. God is speaking even to you and you and you. God is speaking. God is speaking. I only want, let me tell you what I wanted to do. I wanted to just come and whet your appetite from this series that we're going to be doing. I, I wanted you to come because I want us to pray this evening. I really want us to pray. I want us to pray. I want you to put on your intercession cap. I want us to pray. But you know, if you are not convinced that you can come boldly to the throne of grace, you will pray some nice words, but you will not believe it. You also need to know that the voice of God is behind all the writers of the Bible. So when you read the word of God, you don't have to say, but this is not in red writing. But I know Jesus said this. A Paul said this. Oh yeah. Is everybody following this evening? I'm going to take us to some single verses or so, and I'm not going to be long. I'm not going to be here forever. I just wanted to come and tell you primarily what I've already told you. But I want to take you to a few single verses well, because from these verses, I am going to attempt to prove to you that the God that of the Christian church, the God of the Christian church, that that God, this God, understands every human plight. He understands every 
human plight. I also want to try and convince you from scripture that when you hurt, it also hurt him. Your hurt is felt. Miss Dent, when you hurt, Sister G, when you hurt, I want you to, your hurt is felt. One of the lies that the devil loves to tell us is that after nobody no care, you know, when you're going through your vibes, the enemy wants to speak in your head and make you feel like not even God care. Well, I'm going to tell you something. God understands all of our plights. God, indeed, the Bible says, <laughs> our infirmities, he's touched by them. And the Bible also proves that God cares. Before we start reading those verses, I want to say something here. We pastors and preachers have fooled you into believing that when God turns up and healing is needed, he heals everybody in a wholesale way. Let me just tell you something. There's a passage in the Bible. Did I mention it um, the last time we were together? There's a passage in the Bible, St. John 5. Where Jesus walks down to a pool where the maim and every kind of illness was. And he walks down to that place and saw all these dozens of sick people. But he healed one man. And left. We have a little thing that we boast about in this church. At best, that's how it sounds to some people. We have three women in this church who couldn't give birth, couldn't get pregnant. And we prayed simple prayers. God opened their wombs or touched them man and fixed the thing. And the three babies are now in church with us right here. No, we can boast about that and tell you that and make you run, come look for us at a church. Thinking that we have healing that give way just like that. We would be lying to you. God sovereignly, out of his sovereignty, chose to give our three our three women, babies. But what do I say now to another sister who gets married and God no decide to give her no baby? Am I going to turn and tell her it's because your faith is not strong enough? Well, let me just tell you, the man at the pool never extend any faith to Jesus. Go read it for yourself. In fact, he was giving Jesus stories. We don't have nobody to put me in when the water is troubled. Boom, boom. He was giving Jesus stories. God sovereignly heal that man. Heal that man. The blind man in John 9, I think it is. If he, when they ask him, him do not even have a clue? Him do not even know how to explain or who heal him eyes? B born blind can't even explain it God's sovereignty do I understand it I don't I don't understand God's sovereignty I don't know why God heals somebody from cancer and another another faith filled person dies from it and gone to glory I don't know and I don't need to know that's God's prerogative But if you ask me if God is a healer, I won't hesitate to tell you that God is more than a healer. A 
That's why I made the point in our celebration service that you will never hear me say, you know, every week we have a healing service or a deliverance service. Oh, no. Oh, no. I have gospel meetings. I have meetings where we look to the word of God and see what the gospel says. And we praise God and preach the gospel. We praise God and preach the gospel. That's what we do. Hebrews 2 and verse 18. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 18. Get ready so that we can pray in this microphone before we leave here today. Different ones of you will lead us into prayers. Not no spirit in anything, you know. Just, just be led of the spirit and believe God because you put your faith in the grace. That's what we do. You understand me? Hebrews what now? 2 verse 18. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted. He's able to aid those who are tempted. Them verse that warm my heart. Them verse that warm my heart. Chapter 3. Chapter 3, 1 to 6. Chapter 3, 1 to 6. And then probably verse 14 or so, I think. Chapter 3, 1 to 6. Are you ready? Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the what? But I'll always come back to you a second time to get you to help me strong. Come on. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was, hold on, who was what? Now this is important church. Who was faithful to him who appointed him as Moses also was faithful in all his Hold on, so the two people now, two people, two people, two persons. First of all, the Bible says, Jesus was faithful to God who appointed him. And Moses was also faithful. I don't know what everybody's name is off the top of my head just now, but I'm telling you, I'm calling out to you. Maybe I should call myself by my own name and say, Fitzroy, you better be faithful. Faithful. For this one has been counted what? Worthy of more glory than. Say better. Say better. Lord of mercy. Say better. Come again. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses. Inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone. But he who built all things is. Woo. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant. For a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. But. Christ as a son. Hold on. What, what is the comparison now? Moses was a what? Servant. 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 Mo Moses was what? Go back to verse 5, sir. I don't want to teach and people are not getting it. And Moses indeed was, a, was faithful in all his house as a what? As a what? As a servant. Verse 6. But Christ as a son over his own house. Whose house we are if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. What can I say to you? What does to say to you, Sister Bell? Make sure you're holding on. Hold on. Hey, Kimani, man, hold on. Hey, Minister Jeb, hold on. Hold on, Judes, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Did, did we say we're going to try verse 14 also? For we are made... Lord of mercy, come now, man. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold to the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Are you with me? 
Is it benefiting you so far? Woo! Let's go to chapter 4, 14 through to 16. Chapter 4, 14 through 16. Are we ready? Here we go. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the servant. Jesus the servant. Oh, he's greater than Moses then. Jesus the son of God. Let us hold fast. Our what? Our what church? Verse 15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time is it coming together a little better for you now amen let's go to chapter 5 2 and 3 we're just about closing chapter 5 2 and 3 i need your help here we go who can who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of... I want to go back to this, you know, because I have some family members that I'm praying for, you know. And I have some friends that I'm praying for, you know. And I have some people within this area in which the church is situated that I'm praying for, you know. Watch me now. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? For that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason thereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. Say better. We soon go home. Say better. Say better five times. Come on. Better. 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 Woo! Better! <laughs> Go to chapter 6, 12, and 15. Chapter 6, 12, and 15. It's Mark. Here we go. That you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit through what? Through faith and patience, they inherit the promises. My God, if I take you, did I say verse 15 also? And so, after he had patiently endured, after he had patiently endured, after Christ patiently endured, he obtained. Wow. I now sell you no hollow. I now give you no gimmicks. This is what the scripture says. If you patiently endure, like people like Abraham, and if you endure patiently, if you just copy what them do, if you just start imitating what they did. Can we go back to chapter 7 and verse 25? I want to go back there. Chapter 7 and verse 25. I want to go back there. Everyone, let's read. It says what? Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the utmost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession. Many times more wonder how many did already. It has crossed my mind many times. How come? I haven't died as yet. And I know that the only reason a wretch like me is still standing 
and moving about is because Jesus, God and his sovereignty. I don't know. I don't know. But all I can turn around and say and to Sue is, Lord, I just thank you. Hey, Deacon Will, I, nothing in my hand do I bring, but simply to your cross I cling. Nothing in my hands do I bring, but simply to the cross I cling. My only plea, Christ died for me. So, Lord, take me as I am. My only plea. My only plea. I'm going to just drop something in right here because it has just come back to my, 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 my spirit. That when God called Paul the apostle, God didn't tell Paul that I want you to travel the world and see the wonders of the world. I'm gonna, God says, come let me show you what things you must suffer for my sake. So when you go on YouTube and hear them preaching them hogwash, do not follow them. The health and wealth gospel is not an authentic gospel. Huh? It is not the gospel. It's not biblically sound. Chapter 8, 12. Chapter 8 and verse 12. Chapter 8 and verse 12. I'm sure we read it earlier. Come on. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember. Listen to what God says, I will. I, God, will. It's not because you were born on the right side of town. It's not because you went to the right school. It's not because you never had sex before. You got married. It's not because of any of these things. Whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So quickly the time passes by and we're at the end of another program. Thanks so much, friends, for listening. Come back with us next week. Same time, same station. Do connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Praise Deliverance Ministry. For prayer or numbers to call are 876-435-3394, 876-630-8292. We thank you again for tuning in, and we hope that your lives are indeed transformed.